Rohan and Hannah are going to get us started with our evening, talking a little bit about their plastic bag project. You'll see their project as you go up and around the spiral staircase throughout the rest of your evening. Um, they've been pretty active throughout uh, various community enterprises. You've seen them already at the Figment and at the Halloween Halstead Street Parade. Well, hello everybody. You guys all look awesome. I'm super excited to share this Winter Ball with all of you. Uh, thank you, DJ and Andrea, everybody who put Winter Ball together. This is like an awesome event. I'm super happy to be here again. Um, I really hope you guys aren't standing here thinking we have like advice to give you. Um, <laughs> Because we don't really. <laughs> Sorry. Um, however, I've just got a feeling a lot of you guys have done a bunch of cool shit, and I think our collective knowledge could kind of bring out something really insightful. So we're not really trying to give a talk so much, but sort of more so host a discussion. So we've got a couple questions, and then I can. Uh, as Dietrich mentioned, we are Bring Your Bag Chicago. We work with uh, people who are working on actual um, legislation that's being working through City Hall right now. We've had one hearing with uh, the Alderman, and we've got a second one planned for January. Um, we are championed by Alderman Joe Moreno, the cool Alderman, um, but we have the support of many others. Um, as Dietrich said, we've been at Figment, we're at the Halloween <coughs> Parade, um, and we have many more projects in the works. So for our first question, what do you guys think is the best way to sort of integrate art into your activism, and what do you think you can really accomplish um, using art with your activism? We found that art and activism works very well for awareness. As you guys probably saw, there are like a fuck ton of bags on the stairs over there, um, and that's actually how much we use in one minute. And like that was just sort of cool, not really cool, but like a pretty powerful fact we wanted to share with people. Um, I have uh, answered kind of an answer to that. Um, that a little bit ago, I realized that um, up until that point, I had been asking the question, what is art? But that's a boring question compared to what isn't art? <laughs> so um, just think about that when you're trying to do any sort of activism. What isn't artistic about it, and how can you make it artistic? Do you have any firm sense to like where the line is between like art and not art, or is it just kind of a no? Yeah, that's like an impossible question. Um, so for, aside from awareness, is there anything anything else that you guys think art is particularly efficient? Uh, totally. Um, I think it brings in a sense of reality, especially with scale. So like, um, you know, like you see something say twenty five hundred something bags are used. Well, what does that mean to somebody unless they actually visualize? What does 2,500 bags really look like in front of you? Or if you see a sign at a park that says like, please recycle, you know, or please throw away your trash, you might just like overlook like a boring sign, you know, that someone just wrote. But if it's like a sculpture made out of a bunch of recycled <coughs> materials that is like captivating, makes you want to look at it, then that might grab your attention, you know, and really think about it just a little more than just a sign. Right, and as to scale, one thing I think that's very interesting, especially, well, with our piece and many other pieces as well, is that it makes people aware of the cognitive dissonance between their beliefs. You know, you can be an environmental person, but you might still get plastic bags because you don't realize how bad they are for the environment and wildlife. Um, but I think that this really makes it clear that it's wasteful and it's bad to get a plastic bag, so. So yeah, that actually sounded to me a lot like still like awareness. Um, but I think that the other thing that art is really important for when it comes to activism particularly is the way that art brings community together. So the, the primary model that's really relevant in Chicago right now is multiculti. I'm not sure how many of you guys know about multiculti, but their mission is essentially about bringing arts and activism together. They have a space above Slime Studio at Augusta, Milwaukee, about 1000 North Milwaukee. They've been together, together running for about three years now. And they have, you know, they constantly have events and different, um, you know, different things that really, like, are using the arts to bring communities together through events. So it's a, in much the same way that we we bring communities together, like, a, like for the sake of community or for the sake of art or sustainability here. And also a new project that I'm working on, Consensus, which is a space at 49th and Western, which focuses on the relationship between arts and service. Multiculti does that with actors. So. So we have getting people's attention, awareness, bringing community together. Anything else that you guys are, think art is very powerful for in terms of activism? Inspire. Art does everything. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't want to give away my whole talk. But, <laughs> um, 
You can teach. You can teach. I mean, what can you not teach through art for people who, who don't learn in traditional ways, especially, you know, art and visual arts, like, have a different way of connecting, you know, synapses in your brain where some people might understand a little bit more um, than, than a traditional way of learning. But so you can teach health through there, and, and I mean, art is economy, even though we don't always feel it. We can build economy with art and and poor marginalized communities. You know, so we can teach professionalism with art. We can teach what can we not teach with us? You know, and, and interact with other other communities and and, and people with new resources. I think this is an excellent question to uh, excellent point that you made to springboard into our next question, um, which is talking about what are some common shortcomings. Um, that art suffered from, especially with regards to activism. So one thing that we have found uh, is a shortcoming is that unless you really work in some way for there to be a call to action, tonight we have completely failed in this. Our website isn't even in our installation at all. Um, but you really have to be conscious of creating a call to action because otherwise, you know, you're not creating that channel for people to easily do something about the issue. Um, what do you guys think are some other shortcomings? I think that there's not having the website, like that would help maybe with the springboard thing, but um, I feel like there's still a call to action just on maybe a smaller scale, but just seeing that many, like it's hard to then be at the grocery store next week and get a plastic bag and not be like, I don't need to like put that back. That's not for me, you know? So I think that this is this is successful in that. But I know what you mean by the shortcomings, like, you know, if you're looking at, at it as like a form of igniting something, um, People are sort of lazy and like to just sort of sit back and see things sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. So if you have something that makes that next step really easy, you know, maybe if the first step is really easy, people will be more likely to keep going with it. I don't know, it kind of Anyone else kind of think there are some sort of like things that art can't really accomplish through trying to do activism? I guess this is kind of a bad group to ask this question. <laughs> Because yeah. it's like, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's why I make a distinction between activism and service. I think that they're that they're different. Activism has more to do with engaging political structures and like and engaging like the um, like the, the norms with with which like we we live our daily lives um, that have to do with like with the political and economic structures that govern our lives. But then service is more about our relationship with other people in society and like what we can give and how it can be altruistic to other people, whereas activism is more about how we can change systems. I think it's really important to like think about when you're doing activism, to think about the, the community you're, you're involved in yourself in. Too many people have a great idea and, and push forward like a bulldozer and, and run a whole bunch of people over with it. Run a whole bunch of people over with an idea that a community may not want. I think that happens very often with guerrilla theater. Sort of like crash into a coffee shop and like reenact some assassin, some terrible thing America did in South America. <laughs> and like it's just sort of like, it can just sort of be like aggressive and like, it, and I think your point is totally lost if your audience is like, no, stop, I'm just trying to get a cup of coffee. Yeah, and then I think on the flip side of that, there could be not enough people behind it. Um, so, you know, at the Halston Halloween break, for example, we were very, very small and stationary at a moving event. People saw us, but they didn't know what we were about. People thought we were selling plastic bags. Uh, people thought very crazy things. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also you have your classic left and right brain argument. Sure. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of people get caught up in being artistic and creating and not think of how that should be presented to the world in an orderly way. That makes sense. That you can make your point and actually uh, yeah, I do, I do think if you're trying to make like activist art, it's like very often you get wrapped up in sort of like the art side. Like I'm making art, which is really cool. Like I want to make this cool, pretty thing, and like sort of it's probably like if you're not careful, it's possible to sort of lose your focus, and, like, lose your activist message, and whatever the like, aesthetic is of what you're making. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, what might help with that is think of it like you're writing a paper for an English class, like. What is your thesis? What is your point? Why are, 
why are you making this art and how effective are you being at articulating that with the art? Not someone has to be there to explain it. What how is the art explaining itself? Yeah. And then um, going off of that, just reactivity on the artist's part in order to sculpt their piece to adjust for different audiences to fit the space that they're in. Again, also how we didn't do that. <laughs> Very stationary. Um, so I, mean, I also think when you're making sort of activist art, there's just like this sort of inherent shortcoming of it that all art falls into is it's limited by time and space. Like your piece is in one spot, so like the scale you can have is just like, there's this limitation there that's just like inherent to most things that you're making. So that's sort of things like one way you can kind of overcome that is by just sort of tapping into the digital space that exists. Like how many of you guys have Facebooks? By like a show of hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I, mean, I feel like, So like, how can you really, how can you use sort of the digital space to kind of complement your activism? Um, for us, like the way that I really got involved in, like we got involved in Plastic Bag, because there was a plastic, like a Bring Your Bag Chicago Facebook page, and I messaged them and I was like, you guys are doing a great job, I want to help you. And then I met this person who's been working tirelessly on the cloud for like two years. Um, and she was like, this is awesome, let me support you in any way. Oh, you need to like spend $500 on these reusable bags for your project, all the front, all of it. Um, so I guess like the point I'm trying to make is like if there's a cause that you feel sort of very strongly about that you want to do something about but like don't really have a network or like don't really feel like you have the means to do it, like there is probably somebody else in the city who is working very hard on it and you can use sort of like Facebook and social media to find them very easily. Um, Another way we're using the digital sphere, and this hasn't been enacted yet, um, but it's something we're working very hard on creating, is a website where you can just go, type in the URL, uh, click on the neighborhood you live in, and it'll immediately connect you via Google Voice to your alderman. Um, so you can you know, talk about plastic bags, obviously with respect to us, but then this model can be implemented for other ordinances that are working through. And it's just a really easy way. Most calls that aldermen get are about their trash not getting picked up, people's trash not getting picked up, or some complaint like that. So uh, an actual, Having someone on the phone is very, very powerful to an alderman because it's literally would be probably the only time that week that they hear something that wasn't, you know, a complaint. So are there any other things that you guys think that the digital space can be really helpful for? Um, I guess you raised that something there. Um, I think uh, the digital space can be really used to find different collaborators. So other people that want to get in on this project, let's say that there's somebody who's really interested in making um, activism-based documentaries. Um, maybe the art installation by itself doesn't show all of the pieces that you wanted to show, like um, how to go a step further, really, how to solve it, or what the battle really is to get to where it is today. But then when you're doing a documentary experience, you can include the art installation, all of those broader things. Um, so the, I think more you collaborate with other people, the deeper you can go into some of the things that you want to tackle. Um, for example, I think one good movie that did that was, uh, I think it was called Wasteland, and they, they took, um, they went to, I think, Rio, and uh, found um, people who worked in the dumps, and they recreated portraits of them with, on a huge scale, with, uh, gar with garbage and recycled materials, and then these went to auction at uh, New York for hundreds of thousand dollars, and the money went back into a union for them, but I think what was so powerful about that was the document uh, documentary that showed the entire experience. Um, not just them going to the auctions, but really being able to reach a wider audience and teach people more by having more people collaborating on that project. And putting a human face on it as well, showing you the people who have done all this work, because I think that just that basic human connection can really make people who are being exposed to your project uh, a lot more sympathetic and uh, willing to help with the cause. You guys saw you with your memories? Yeah. Well, Something I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm making YouTube videos, and what I'm trying to do with that is bring awareness to some of the fundamental issues within the economic structure that create these sort of problems. Where there's planned obsolescence, especially with like iPhones. You notice know, yeah. people yeah. are always buying new ones. So. <laughs> I'm trying to make people aware of how the corporate pursuit of profit is really creating a lot of those fundamental issues in the 
have to recognize when you're buying things like that that you're sort of buying into that philosophy always replacing things. That's really interesting. If you're putting all this time into making videos, one thing I'd highly recommend doing is putting some paid media behind it. Um, some paid media. The digital space made it like really for like on Facebook for like five dollars you can serve a thousand impressions of your post and like YouTube is pretty similar. Like I feel like very often people will make videos but not really have like a good way of promoting that and like you can you can in the digital space like you can spend five dollars and serve a thousand impressions of whatever you're doing. How are you promoting How are you promoting your videos? Um I have one video that has like two million something hits. And I'm redirecting traffic to that. That's awesome. And I thought I saw somebody else. Yeah. Um, can uh, integrate the digital space into meat space with um, handy technologies like Bitly links, bit.ly, the shortened URLs. You can put that like on a, a little thing next to an art installation. It's like, hey, check out this for more, or a QR code. Um, another helpful way to uh, integrate that. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. Anyone else have anything that we could do particularly useful for? Well, I also think we're talking about waste. We have to examine, as you were discussing the plan of lessons, we're utilizing the, in one form the enemy. I mean, None of this gets built into long I mean, I think again, you have a cyborgian experience that has to be leveled in a healthy way. But it's also a something. So I'm less worried about plants and that. I think it's really important to think about that too because you got like um, one laptop per child, right? And it's a huge program around the world. But working in a third world country myself, I know that every single electronic piece that I take there is going to end in the ocean if I if I throw it away. You know, and this guy is like. You know, putting two hundred dollar, you know, um, computers out, little Mac computers out through through educational institutions, and 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 with no service. You know, who's going to service that computer in sub-Saharan Africa? Right, no one. So, and then where does it go? It goes right into the ground where you grow your food. You know, and in my neighborhood, um, it, in Haiti, like. They burn all their plastic bags in the cornfield where they eat from. And, and there's not really a lot of other choices. Which, which brings us to when is technology going to actually get very, very mm -hmm. interesting. They're doing things with silk as far as microchips and all sorts of things that if you start working with completely biodegradable materials, you've truly created a sustainable instrument, which is what technology should be. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to this part of this conversation. We're like very happy to continue talking about this throughout the evening. The later it gets, our answers might get a little bit dumber. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like we were super, this was like our first time doing this and we were super nervous and you guys were like a really awesome audience. So thank you. Yay. Do you take a moment to get something to eat, get something to drink? Sue Frame is here, she'll be our next speaker. She'll be talking about Jack Mal Expression. There's a little bit of information right behind you, and then we'll actually give her some open time and some conversational time to go from there. Thanks, guys. Tune back in.